Okay, we need to go through. We need to update these running back rankings. I mean, we have injury updates. Maybe on the last list, I forgot Aaron Jones. We need to go through and put them on. And also, realize, well, you know what? Um, Damien Harris from Andre Stevenson are going up against the Detroit freaking Lions. These guys should probably be a little bit higher. But before we get into it, go down there, drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. We're live streaming every single day. I'm not taking a single day off of live streaming. You can probably hear it in my voice. So make sure you hit that bell next to the subscribe button if you want to come out to our live streams, get your questions answered. Or if you can't make it to the live streams, just go down to the comment section below. Ask your questions there. Last but not least, if you want to check out any of these cool player props, you can find them on Underdog Fantasy. On Underdog Fantasy, you can get into some real money in-season basketball drafts as well. You can find the link in the comment section or the link in the description of the video. If you make your first deposit on underdog fantasy with promo code flock they're going to match that first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100 but that should be it let's go through let's dive into these rankings starting off saquon barkley at one i mean hell you maybe you can make the argument that saquon barkley deserves to be in his own freaking tier as i've discussed i'm worried about this new york giants offense i don't know what this quarterback situation is going to be I know that they ran the Wildcat at the end of the last game when all their quarterbacks were down. They had a hobble Daniel Jones in there. I don't know how sustainable that is, but it doesn't freaking matter when Saquon Barkley is the best running back in the NFL, getting involved as a pass catcher as well. Right, let's put him at one. You don't need to argue with that. Let's go down to two. Christian McCaffrey with CMC. I know it is a brutal matchup going up against the 49ers like the 49ers this is a spot where we expect the Carolina Panthers to be horrendous Baker Mayfield to be very bad and probably not too many points scored by the Panthers in general but that's the situation every week Saquon Barkley had more receptions last week than carries we have a vintage CMC back he's a top tier running back now going down to our next year we have Austin Eckler returning with Austin Eckler three touchdowns a week ago now not going to be as good of a matchup going up against the Cleveland Browns defense that just shut down Marcus Mariota. Only seven completions, but Justin Herbert is a little bit better than Mariota. I think Eckler can overcome it. Now, in that same game, we are going to have Nick Chubb at four. If you were playing in a non-PPR format, you can move Nick Chubb higher than this. But these are going to be PPR rankings where obviously Nick Chubb maybe is a lock to go out there and get you the 100 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. Maybe you want to go bet the over on the Nick Chubb rushing yards I think that even though you could be very excited about the 100 yards and the rushing touchdown, still not getting heavily involved as a pass catcher. So for a full PBR format, we are going to have Nick Chubb a little bit lower than Eckler. Going over to our next guy, we're going to go Derrick Henry at five. Derrick Henry, very similar situation to Nick Chubb. Running back that's going to get you a lot on first and second down. Running back that's not going to be seeing much work in the receiving game. I think the difference between Chubb and Derrick Henry is Nick Chubb's playing in a better offense. Now, the last guy in this year is going to be Dalvin Cook. Love the matchup against the Chicago Bears. If anything, I think you can make an argument for Dalvin Cook to be at the top of this tier. I'm going to be a little bit more hesitant, though, with the involvement of Alexander Madison with the shoulder injury for Dalvin Cook, but he should be healthier going forward than he was this past week. Now, dropping down another tier, we're going to have Joe Mixon at seven. With Mixon, very tough matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. However, he is third in the NFL right now in targets at the running back position, only behind Austin Eckler and Brees Hall, who we'll be talking about a little bit later on. He's getting the workload we want. He's been very inefficient. This offensive line has still been bad. It's a tough matchup. But there's so many running backs in this range that have question marks. Now, our next guy is going to be Leonard Fournette at eight. Fournette going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Rashad White saw an expanded role this past week, which probably need to be worried about with Fournette as well. I mean, hell, he had three carries. This team doesn't want to run the ball. But to be fair, I mean, he is still getting involved as a pass catcher. Non-PBR format, you're going to be sliding Fournette down these rankings. Now, dropping down to our next year, we're going to have Alvin Kamara at nine. With Kamara... I know everybody hates him. Nobody wants him. I get it. I understand it. Last time he played week three at 15 carries and seven targets. Here's the workload you want to see, even if he's been so disappointing so far this year. I mean, I wasn't a big Kamari guy coming into the season, but getting him at nine here against the Seattle Seahawks, what I believe to be a very easy matchup. We had the Detroit Lions putting up 45 points last week. Not worried at all. Now we are going to have... 
Aaron Jones at 10 with Aaron Jones. I'm sorry we forgot him on the last video. If y'all don't know, I do not use any other rankings to make these lists. I go straight off the old noggin. I, I go through and just rank these guys on my own. So occasionally I will miss out a player or two. That's why the comment section is so valuable. That's why I need your opinion down there in the comments. But Aaron Jones, I like the matchup against the Giants where the Packers should just beat down the New York Giants here. But now going over to our next running back at 11, we're going to have Jamal Williams. Obviously, Jamal Williams top 10 running back so far this season. I am ranking it as if you have no DeAndre Swift. Of course, I'll give you that injury update on Swift on Saturday. I don't love the matchup against the New England Patriots, but Jamal Williams getting a ton of work in the receiving game. Obviously, has the touchdown upside as well in what has been the best offense in the NFL. Now going over to our last running back, we are going to have Najee Harris at 12. With Najee Harris, I mean, he has the workload you like to see, but the issue is this is going to be the worst game environment in the league this week. Right now, the Buffalo Bills are 14-point favorites over Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think if we can, we're going to go through it. We are going to avoid starting literally any, and I repeat, any Pittsburgh Steelers we can. But now dropping down to our next tier, we are going to have Miles Sanders leading us off. With Miles Sanders, a phenomenal week. What we do need to be monitoring is what we are going to have with the secondary running backs behind him. What I'm a little bit frustrated with with Miles Sanders is why are you still giving Kenneth Gainwell work inside the red zone? Why are we still getting Miles Sanders vultured rushing touchdowns? I'm fine with Jalen Hurts taking him. Like We're never going to get away from that. But can we get away from Kenneth Gainwell taking these? I don't hate the matchup at all going up against the Arizona Cardinals. Now our next guy, love the matchup, James Robinson. So many people got mad at us last week for having James Robinson too low. Hell, he is going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. What are you expecting this week? He's going up against the Houston Texans. Night and day difference between the overall game script and the matchup for James Robinson here. I'd be a lot more excited this week. Now our next guy is going to be Clyde Edwards Layer 15 with CEH. Wait, I'm sorry if I told you to bench him. I thought that he was going to be in a brutal spot against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Back in week three, Jarrett McKinnon played more snaps than Clyde edwards Lair. He was going up against the toughest run defense in the NFL in week four against Tampa. Hell, he had one hell of a day. It's an okay matchup against the Raiders. I think you can't have him at 15. Now going over to our next guy in that same game, Josh Jacobs, 16. Jacobs, top five running back this past week. And y'all know I drafted over 700 teams on underdog. Josh Jacobs, my most drafted running back because we were getting him in round seven in a half PPR league. Like, I like Josh Jacobs, but you got to be hesitant this week. It's going to be a much tougher matchup going up against Kansas City where we can assume that the Chiefs are going to win this game heavily. I mean, they're favored right now by about seven to seven and a half points. Going over our next game, we're going to have Damian Pierce at 17. I moved Damian Pierce up compared to where we had him a week ago. I I'm sorry for having Damian Pierce too low. <laughs> I even had him too low at the beginning of these rankings. I'm still hesitant on the long term with Damian Pierce because Rex Burkett is still getting everything on third down. Rex Burkett is still getting everything in the two minute drill. And this is still a piss poor offense in Houston. But to be fair, I mean, hell, he had six receptions this past week, even if he only had eight receiving yards to go with it. He had the 75 yard rushing touchdown. So I think we probably do need to move Damian Pierce up. No next guy is going to be Brees Hall at 18. With Brees Hall going up against the Miami Dolphins, what else could you be looking for here? You're getting a running back that is second in the NFL in targets where he's been a part-time player through the first four weeks. Love this role that we have for Brees Hall as a pass catcher. Don't love the matchup against Miami. Like long-term, if you could go trade Damian Pierce for Brees Hall, please do that right now. Going over to the next guy, James Conner, 19. With Conner, I don't know. Like, this is a spot where I think that he is clearly one of the most disrespected running backs in fantasy at this moment. And I spent a long time telling people to go through and avoid James Conner in drafts because you were going to get some serious touchdown regression. But, hell, he's still getting involved as a pass catcher. This offense should be better going forward. Like, to be honest with you, I would rather have James Conner rest of season over a lot of the running backs that we're ranking him behind right now. Maybe you want to wait a week because it is going to be a brutal matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. But in the long term, I really like buying low on James Conner with the role in the volume he has in Arizona at this moment. 
But going down to our next tier, we're going to have J.K. Dobbins at 20. With Dobbins, I know a lot of people are asking, oh, do we sell I? Do we sell I? Do we sell well, we are going to have to at least monitor what we are going to get with Gus Edwards upon his return. But I don't think you sell high on J.K. Dobbins. So running back that was tied for the team lead in receptions this past week for the Baltimore Ravens. This is a running back that is getting work at the goal line. So running back playing in a great offense. Checking every single box you'd want to see. I, I love me some J.K. Dobbins. I do want to look at what his role is with the return of Gus Edwards, though. Now going over to our next guy, we are going to have Jeff Wilson. With Jeff Wilson, don't love the matchup against Carolina, even though the 49ers should be winning the majority of this game. They should be able to go through and run the ball in the second half. He's not getting targeted out of the backfield, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but still, he is a running back that is playing in a good offense, behind a good offensive line, and is getting every single carry out of the backfield. Now, our last guy in this year is going to be Khalil Herbert. With Herbert, I am assuming we have no David Montgomery. And just like we said a week ago, He's playing in one of the worst offenses in the NFL, and he's not going to be catching the ball out of the backfield. So I think naturally his ceiling is going to be a little bit capped here. Y'all know I'm just not a big Justin Fields guy. Now dropping down to our next tier, we're going to have Damian Harris at 23, Ramadre Stevenson at 24. I mean, this backfield does look like it's split, but it doesn't matter. Even if they don't have a quarterback, even if, this should be on paper one of the worst offenses in the NFL. They are still going to be two running backs we need to go through and jam in just because the beautiful matchup against the Detroit Lions. Right now, you still have the New England Patriots favored by about three to three and a half points this game. Obviously, they're going to be trying to run the ball consistently. Ramondre Stevenson is the one getting targeted out of the backfield. But now going down to our next running back, we are going to have Kareem Hunt, 25 Kareem Hunt going up against Los Angeles. I think that this may be a Kareem Hunt game, just looking at the fact that, hell, you don't expect the Cleveland Browns to be winning this game. I mean, right now, if we're going to be looking at the spread of this between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Cleveland Browns, Los Angeles is favored by three. So I think maybe if the Cleveland Browns fall behind, then all of a sudden you're in a situation where you're getting more snaps, more touches for Kareem Hunt. I don't know. It's an interesting spot. It's an interesting spot. Now our next guy is going to be A.J. Dillon at 26. With A.J. Dillon going up against the New York Giants, I think that A.J. Dillon is a player I'm going to be trying to buy low on. I think that we are ranking A.J. Dillon, honestly, kind of close to his floor here, if I'm going to be honest. And if something were to change in this situation, where you were to have an injury to Aaron Jones, then A.J. Dillon has a top three running back finish in his range of outcomes. So I really like buying low on A.J. Dillon. He has seven more touches so far this season than what you've had with Aaron Jones. Now going over to our next tier, we're going to have Rashad Penny at 27. With Rashad Penny going up against New Orleans Saints. Don't like this matchup. I mean, yes, the Seattle Seahawks put up 48 points last week. 48 points. It doesn't matter. They're five and a half point dogs here. It's a running back in a very bad offense where Kenneth Walker is seeing more and more work. I would rather rank Rashad Penny too low than too high, to be honest with you. Now, our next guy is going to be Ezekiel Elliott, 28. With Zeke, I mean, this is what we've been talking about with Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard. Very hard to start either running back until we get Dak Prescott back. I, I know that we have had okay quarterback play here in Dallas. Or yes, they are currently... 3-0 with no Dak Prescott this year, but still this offense is going to be capped overall. This is still going to be a team. It's giving about half of their looks over to Tony Pollard, so I'm not a massive fan of Zeke. And going over to our next guy, we're going to have Antonio Gibson at 29. We're going to have to continue to monitor what we have with Brian Robinson Jr. Maybe by the time this video comes out, you already know if Brian Robinson's playing or not. I mean, he's eligible to play this week. They could push it back a few so I'm going to give you an update later on in the week. But as it stands right now, Antonio Gibson is in a touch squeeze already with J.D. McKissick. Gibson's played less than 50% of the snaps in back-to-back -back weeks here for the Washington Commanders. J.D. McKissick's taking that work in the receiving game. If Brian Robinson comes in, takes five to eight carries per game as well. It's not going to be much left over for Antonio Gibson. Now our next guy is going to be Tony Pollard at 30. With Pollard, I mean, right in that same situation as Ezekiel Elliott where I really don't want to start either one of these running backs where, where they're in that 50-50 backfield split and a bad offense. Now, once we get Dak Prescott back here, I think it will be a better spot. Now, our last running back in this year is going to be Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary is playing 
every single snap. And I repeat, every single snap for the Buffalo Bills. So maybe you can make the argument it should be higher than this, but I mean, with every single snap, you didn't see a lot of production last week. This is just a team that does not want to run the ball. Now, drop it down to our next tier. We're going to have Tyler Algier here at 32. With Tyler Algier, I mean, a horrendous matchup going up against Tampa. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, which you really like to see. And also with Cordell Patterson going to the IR, there are really not too many running backs to be taking touches away from him. I, I just don't like the matchup against Tampa. Now, our next running back, Cam Akers, 33, going up against the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys have not allowed a team to score 20 points so far this season. The Dallas Cowboys have a phenomenal defense. We need to be avoiding it at all costs. Cam Akers looks like he is a junior high level running back. I don't want to go down this road. But anyway, our next two guys going to be what we have with the Miami Dolphins players in Reem Bostert and Chase Edmonds. 50-50 backfield split where it looks like Rainbowster is taking more and more of the looks. But Edmonds has been getting involved as a pass catcher and at the goal line as well. Expect this to be a very bad offense till we get to attack of lower back. And what production there is, it's going to be funneled through with Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Now our last running back is going to be Michael Carter in this same game. Carter's still getting involved as a pass catcher, but... To everybody who laughed at me for saying Brees Hall would take over this backfield sooner rather than later. Now, I think we can all agree at this point that Brees Hall is the guy that we want here. Now, before you go down to the comments section and go, Mason, you're an idiot. Where's Neem Hines? Where's Melvin Gordon? Guys, pretty sure this video is being posted right after the game on Thursday. So you're not going to be able to start them anyway. So we are not going to rank them. We're ranking this for people to make their better starting lineup decisions this weekend. But thank you. I appreciate y'all. Hope you have a great day. If you have anything else that you think that I need to fix, any fantasy football questions of your own, go down there, leave them in the comment section. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you're able to come out and hang out with us in these live streams. Last but not least, have a great day. I truly do appreciate you. Hope we get to see you in the live stream tonight.